you know, just, just really trying to get his life together and, and, um, and just sharing different experiences he had with me. And, um, and I said, no, the truth be told, the, the, the content and circumstance of your life is a consequence of what's going on inside of you. And the truth be told, if you begin to change what's going on inside of you, your whole universe begins to change. How you begin to relate to people. As you, as you find peace in yourself, you're going to start finding peace with others. Because you're going to give that off, and you're going to, you know, and you're going to get back what you're sending out. If you're sending out confusion, you're going to read confusion. If you're sowing chaos, you're going to read chaos. You know, if you sow love and harmony, you're going to start reaping love and harmony. If you sow commitment, you're going to start reaping that. You're going to get back what you've been giving out. And sometimes you have to ask yourself the question, what is it about me that's creating this environment? And begin to look at yourself. That's the only way change can come about. Change can't come about with you. Change got to come about with me. I got to. I have to look within myself and see how I'm addressing situations. How am I relating to people? Um, the Bible said he that have friends must show himself friendly. So, for example, the man that was by the pool. The Bible says that he, Jesus asked the question, "Will thou be made whole?" His response is that I have no man. What are you giving off? Because there's something you're giving off by no one wants to help you. There's something you're giving off by no one wants to work with you. What's the difference between this guy and this another guy that was sick of the palsy? And he had four friends. Four friends. That's the way it was good to see you. So come on, sit up here. Um, um, he had four friends that, um, that was willing to go up on the rooftop, take the roof off, and let him down. So what's the difference between one guy, nobody would help him, but this guy had so many so many friends that had the type of passion and commitment that they were not gonna quit because we couldn't get in. We're gonna find a way to get you in this thing. That's relationship. That's relationship. That's the kind of atmosphere we have to create in the church. An atmosphere where um, we, are, we are willing to be that person for the next person. Hello. Everyone wants someone to let them down, but are you willing to be that one to let someone else down? Because it's only self-serving to be in a place where people are always helping you. Are you that person that will go the extra mile to make sure that whatever this person needs, I'm not going to say, no, it's too hot, you know, I don't feel like it, I'm going to get dirty. Uh, I'm going to, no, you want to be that person that's going to be able to step out and help that person get down from minute to go. And as what you make happen for other people, God is going to allow to happen for you. It doesn't matter what, how long it takes, God will provide somebody in your life that's going to help you to get to where you need to go. Somebody say amen. Yes. See, there's things that I tell you, it's not in my notes, it's just coming from the Spirit as I begin to flow. Now, so harmony, we're dealing with the Spirit of harmony. And, we, and I ask you to open up the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 25 and verse 8. It's beautiful out. More, more people should be in church. It's beautiful out there. Let's go home to make them. Exodus 25, verse 8 through 9. Let's read together for novel sake. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Now, now, as we begin to talk about the ministry hierarchy of progression, we shared this principle last week, taken from Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And I begin to share with you this principle when it comes to a church. This, this, is, this is a principle that I put together that models from Maslow's hierarchy of needs that essentially um, is used, usable and productive for ministry and for business. Um, someone that is a manager taking this principle and using it in their office to work with in their organization. So this is this this principle transposes any uh, whether it's ecumenical, ecclesiastical church setting, whether it's a business setting, uh, governmental setting. Now, why I'm gonna bring this scripture together with our concept. So we talked about this and how things go in a ministry. The first things first is purpose and vision. Right? When in a ministry, in a church we have to complete, constantly reiterate what is the purpose and the vision? What is the plan of God for this house? Why are we here? What is our why? 
and as I, as I shared with you before, are we recording, sir? Yes, sir. Thank you. I shared with you before. Uh, if we understand purpose and vision first, before we jump to um, number four, what we do, instructions and activities. See, a lot of times when people come to a church, if they don't understand the purpose and the vision of the church, they will want to bring new activities that are not in conjunction with where God is taking us. And so what happens is that, I'm glad you have an idea for the youth, but can you come and work with the, with the youth that we have and the leadership in place right now? We don't come to recreate things, we come to work with what we have now. And if you can't be faithful in what we're doing now, don't introduce some new program. Okay? Now, the Lord said, bring, told Moses, gather an offering of the people. Remember that scripture? To build me a tabernacle. Look at this verse says. Why are we building a tabernacle? Why? That I may dwell among them. That's the why. That's the why. I want you to build me a tabernacle. Why? That I may dwell among them. And watch what he says about this tabernacle. It's not going to be any type of tabernacle. It's not going to be a ready-made, prefabricated tabernacle that anyone can throw up. Uh, he says now, in verse number 9, According to all that I shew thee, watch this now, after the pattern of the tabernacle, and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall he make it. So that means that when we begin to understand the vision and purpose, we need then to understand what is the pattern that God showed us. We can't do it any any way. Just because that church, every time many leaders go to conferences, they go to conferences and they have these manuals on church growth strategies. What work for a pastor in Ohio, Illinois, Chicago, Miami will not work here. We need to find the plan of God for here. And just because that pastor started out two years ago and now has a thousand people, we have to understand that everything produces after its kind and growth is in increments based upon the plan of God. And if you don't have a thousand people in three years, it doesn't mean that you're not in the plan of God. What is the pattern? So not only does God have a pattern for each ministry, but he has a pattern of systematic growth. He has a pattern of growth. Because the truth be told, if we don't have the proper, right here, here we go, culture in the environment, the growth will not be sustained. So this is why a lot of times in churches, people start things, but it never finishes. Number one, it must be connected to the why. Must be connected to the why. Otherwise, it becomes self-serving. And it goes nowhere because it's not connected. You know, in order for a baby to grow in the third semester, trimester, it has to be connected to the uterine wall. So what we have is people would see thoughts, but nothing is connected to the, the uterine wall of the church. So as a result, we have seed, but we don't have any birthing of anything new. Does that make sense? And then anything that we birth must look like our father. Otherwise, there's questions arise. I'm making sense. So, let's look at another scripture here. Numbers chapter, Numbers, Numbers chapter 8, verse 4. Now, why are we teaching like this? We have been, I've been, I've been sharing, I've been sharing, and I've been pouring out over the years. I've been bringing revelation, levels of revelation, testimony of Enoch, all different levels of spiritual truth and going into the, into the secret place and bringing back prophetic truths and revelations, but this is the problem. The problem is that all that stuff is just going to people's heads. And so what begins to happen, and as we need to understand why we have to stay in the subject matter, 
is that when we feed people with this oldest revelation, but their soul don't change because there are things that need to be addressed within the soul, because the soul affects the behavior. And so what we have is a church that has revelation, but don't have the behavior to match the revelation. Thank you.